good morning it's uh, another day today is day four and uh, as promised we will be tracking down to see uh, the progress of, of our day of chicks of uh, how they have been able to do so far and obviously uh, how is their growth and uh, what are some of the inputs or some of the insights we can be able to share actually filming this um, outside the chicken coop and behind me as you can see this is what we call the curtains is actually as um as we shared the other day tends to prevent the direct winds from coming into the chicken coop because obviously uh for the day old chick that's uh not recommended if you ask me why i'll say well the vet told me about that let's see what's inside so um we're about to go to the chicken coop but before we enter, we have to follow procedure. I know you are wondering, what's our procedure? Well, to ensure that you have a proper biosecurity in place. 1K requirement before you go to our chicken farm, you have to wear the gumboots. Now, these ones are actually used just around the compound and inside the coop. And just directly, this is now the next step is uh, what you call a dip. Uh, it's, um, it's filled with water and obviously there is also a disinfectant inside. This to ensure that in case um, you had stepped in bacteria or any residue which, it should, which can be harmful to the birds, now it's not introduced to the flock. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to dip my gumboot inside the, the frog and then we are going to go inside. So that's how we do it. And then the next step is uh, now we are about to enter. We stay uh, here for a few, just few seconds. And obviously now the water is dripped out. Now, yeah, that's how simple it is. Just, uh, but it's a very key bio procedure. In our case, um, we usually use uh, these uh, disinfectant just right here. Let me just zoom so you can be able to see it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bio safe, yes. And it's very effective. It's uh, been recommended to us by the vet whom we use. And uh, so far, it's uh, been a good one. So, uh, as you can see, now that my boots are clean, are safe and disinfected I can walk into our coop and uh, yeah so as you can see this is our floor see how good it looks like uh, courtesy of Magarana when you're building in the coastal province now that's the best thing so I know you're wondering where is the coop now just relax and there we go that is our chicken coop so, um, we are actually just inside the coop and I'm super, super excited. Now, uh, every time I come inside, I have, well, to confess, I always fell in love just, just looking at them because it's such, such a beautiful uh, sight to behold. I know you're wondering, where are the chicks? Well, let me just uh, turn my cam and uh, I'm gonna introduce you to our day four that is uh, four days old brooded chicks and how they look like what they are doing and I'm just excited stay tuned yes there we go that is uh, the chicken coop as we shared the other day it's all round really good this is actually effective for us because uh, we need to conserve the energy at one place and it's well lit that is you can be able to see the light bulb be, despite the fact it's early mornings we still have to keep those on uh, the lights on so that the chick can be able to see their way around because remember i said we have the curtains and these curtains are all around the chicken coop so it means that if we don't keep the lights on then these young little ones will be able to struggle now look at how they are now um when it comes to brooding you have to know the key thing that is on observation by just coming in you can be able to observe the birds and see if there is a problem now 
for this case, I would just say we are just doing just fine. Why do I say so? Because look on how the birds are spread. Now from all that end, all around, you are seeing birds. This means um, there is proper heat all around the coop. And the other thing is, um, the vets usually say, if we see that the birds are kind of like going to one place and most of them they are all trying to fit in, that is simply they don't have enough heat. But then if we see them, uh, they are all lined across the coop, then it means the heat, uh, I mean the warmth is enough and they are comfortable. Now this is the case with us and uh, it, it's super exciting. Now, now look at them. Most of them, they are just um, sleeping. They are so cute, right? So apparently they have been feeding the whole uh, night and obviously the early mornings, the warmth it's good for them. Now what they can do is just to sleep. Look at that one. Let me try to zoom in. I don't want to shout, so uh, look at that. It's really cute, right? Definitely. All right. Um, but I'm actually inside the coop, and it's just amazing. The feeling, like the heat, is just so good. You can even be able to see, like, um, my skin is growing well. It's not because I've applied any oil, but it's the amount of heat that is inside. Now, this, it's good for proper growth of the chicks. Now, apart from ensuring you have, of course, quality feeds, quality water, quality baths, you need to ensure you have adequate source of heat. This is because these are day old chicks, they don't, I cannot be able to regulate their own temperature. So obviously, if you don't give them that heat, then as a farmer, you're going to have a problem. Now, I'm just gonna go close in and show you what I mean. And of course, you can be able to hear that beautiful symphony in the background. Now, let's see the chicks feeding. Okay. We have a good number of these birds just right there on the drinker. They're just, you know, quenching their thirst. I believe that is uh, after feeding and of course after feeling, you know, hey, I need some water just like human beings. Birds also need proper water. And I want you to observe what we have done on our case. So the drinker has to be very clean. So obviously we clean them early in the morning. So one of these days I'm gonna show you how we do it. And then we have placed it in, uh, on a cupboard to ensure there is no splinking around so that we don't have uh, moist conditions. Now, um, on other case here, we have our feeders. Now, Obviously, these are not the best ones. Uh, the vets will always recommend the round one. But now, this is what we started with, uh, and will. But still, they do work for us. So I've uh, just realized we don't have enough feed. So I'll be replenishing. That is adding more feeds to these feeders. And of course, I have just gotten them from the bags. Uh, just there, there. And I'll just use my hand. Uh, we ensure these these um, they are all spread out. There you go, little buddy. Okay, that's good. So we can have uh, at least another handful of them. And uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so we go to the other one and see what they are doing obviously is the same case so we can just remove uh, the used one and uh, replenish the feeds of course there you go and there she is or oh, he is super excited he's actually wondering what's going on here yeah i'm feeling you buddy so um a close they are just like that. So I'll be doing this for the others, um, the other feeders as well, to ensure that uh, we have 
enough feed? Because there's a thing, uh, as farmers, most of the times uh, we tend to neglect. But now, if you need um, uniform growth of your birds, you have to ensure you check on them minute to minute and keep ref uh, replenishing them or filling the feeds and also keep checking the water so, to ensure that um, in every space there is feed and there is water. So, um, I'll be, I'm going to be discussing that with you in a few minutes, so let me just finish up with this and then I'll be back with you guys. Doing this, I just love doing this, it's the most amazing and fulfilling job in the world. That is, well, feeding the birds, which translates to feeding the nation. So uh, I'm just going to go outside, uh, get more feeds and then just come back and try to do it again. So apparently today I'm alone. Uh, my farm manager uh, went to the chat, so obviously we tend in, uh, to step in, which is quite understandable. So um, I've just finished uh, refilling, that is the, the feeders, or they are all spread across uh, the chicken crops. Now there is a reason behind this, and uh, according to the vet who we work closely with, and of course from uh, the Ken chicks, these are the guys who uh, provide us with the day old chicks, um, it's recommended that uh, how across the chicken coat, that is, um, we, for every drinker, you have a close uh, feeder just within. And uh, just the other day, we were in uh, poultry trainings and uh, we were actually informed that it's uh, beneficial if you can have 75% uh, of your coat covered with uh, feeds and with water. Why is that the case? Now, um, if you can be able to see the, the buds tends to be spread across uh, the coops. Now, it means those buds over there, they don't need to come all the other side looking for water. And for the broilers, now this is what we are dealing with. You have to ensure that um, they can be able to get their nutrients as they need them where they need them. Now, look at, let's zoom in and look at what those little kids they are doing right there. Now, you see, they are all busy feasting on there. And if you are going to observe, for example, for a few seconds, you see right there, she had just finished with, um, with the feed. And the next thing she's gonna do is she go to the water right there, exactly and just to quench it. Now, this is sequential. It happened across and across again and again. Now, you don't need your birds leaving uh, the space just to look for the same. There we go. So I'm just done uh, with the uh, refilling, that is the feeders. And as well, I've also checked with the water and of course the drinkers, they still have water. So obviously that's going to be changing the outcome. Now, what I have here is I want to do a close up so you can be able to see how our feeds, feeds like, and I mean, how cute. You would not hate this. So I guess at the end of the day, that's why you're gonna, I mean, uh, subscribe to our channel and get to be all be learning what we do here and get to see the beautiful sceneries of rearing the day old birds and the process and of course i'll give, be giving in the inside so let's see what we have we have our lovely birds feeding there and uh, there she goes she's being joined by others they are coming to check to see what's going on guys yeah i'm being filmed there you go no worries now, this one is going... Ah, uh, what's that? See, like this one here, uh, it's just rested obviously. It has feeded, it has enough uh, warmth and water, and it's excited now. My friend over there, 
is just drinking while well, this one here is just trying to see is that feed no there's no feed so uh so today we actually removed our um, the gunias that's how the sacks we had uh press on top because they were soiled and you don't want them to uh, minimize the case of crocodiliasis now it's coming close to here now this one here just decided you know what um have enough feet so why can i not sit on the feet and find where our friend found the feet she was looking for now all across you'll be able let's try to go that one is trying to well do proper grooming fantastic another view of them drinking it's just fantastic isn't it it's just so cute i just like uh doing this now it's cute doesn't know what's going on Are you ready for the selfie? Nah. So the buds are cross, and um, from my observation, now this is uh, you can be able to see this uh, the heat is there. You can actually feel. We usually change it uh, every morning and mid the morning and of course in the evenings to ensure that uh, the heat is spread across. Now we have our buds there. Alright, come on, come on bro. Come on, just go in. Who's gonna come for me? Well, um, as we come close to our today's uh, video, there are a few things I would like uh, to mention that uh, will differentiate you uh, being, uh, well, a wannabe and of course uh, being a successful uh, poultry farm. Now, one is uh, you need to ensure that uh, the required uh, standard that is one in terms of the biosecurities they are followed don't don't let people go inside your brooding area because you don't know where they came from where they stepped on and maybe the kind of uh, germs or any microorganism they step on now the second one is the first what we mentioned earlier you need to ensure that uh, your chicken coop is uh, well uh, heated, that is you have a proper source of heat. And to ensure these birds, you know, they cannot regulate their own temperatures. You ensure that they can be able to get that warmth, just as if they were being brooded by their own mothers. So that is it from me today. I look forward to sharing with you on day seven. I believe that's when we'll be doing our first vaccinations. I'll be showing you how we do it. Uh, I mean, once you get the vaccine, what are the procedures? And of course, uh, we'll be monitoring the progress of our day or change. Can't wait. I look forward to be sharing more with you guys in this journey of uh, establishing Afri Pharma and obviously we'll need your support uh, if you are an established farmer I mean don't uh, hesitate to uh, share your insights and of course if you are a new farmer don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button and give us a like I mean come on with all the cuteness we've shared at least we deserve that 
see you uh, day seven. Bye.